Mm. Yo, 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 it's the Good Life Podcast, the kickback, it's your boy, Good Life for us. what's up everybody? Feels like we ain't did this in a while, I think we've been off for a couple weeks, y'all been watching the episodes, we been recording and streaming this whole year, so I'm glad y'all been tapping in, man, like I say every time, like this wouldn't be a show without y'all, so it's always love, thank y'all for coming through. I'm Good Life for us. I go by that name on all social media handles. Make sure y'all follow me. You can find me in that Google, Amazon. I'm everywhere. We outside, man. Make sure y'all passing this information on. I may not be for you, you dig, but your grandma may fuck with my poetry. So send my shit along, you dig. Keep that message going. So we got, (laughs) man, this guy's been on the show. I can't even count how many times. I can't even count how many events you've come to, how much you've supported, bro. Like, it's crazy that that we're here, you know what I mean, thinking about how things started. And it's a pleasure, man, to have you on the show every time you do, man. My guy, King Luce, in the building. What's up, brother? What's up, everybody? How you feeling, man? Because the people want to know what you've been up to. Since I think the last time you were here, we did the 420. We did. Actually, we had to be 2020. No, 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 no. We had, we had another show after that. Did we? Three times. It's my third time. Okay. So I think the last the last one we talked about it, it might have been a year ago. Or it feels like earlier this year or like late last year. But we had we had, we, had, we had another one, trust me. I remember. So what you been but, uh, what you been up to in that time? Whew, man. Life been life, right? That's yeah. what we're gonna say like that. we life has definitely been life been. Um well, as you can see, um, I've been traveling. I got a book out. Mm-hmm. I'm still the dip god, so you know I, I does this. So it's it's been great um, since the last time you know we had the show and everything. But mm-hmm. like especially traveling um, and just going to like so many different open mic shows in Philly uh, primarily. So has been. So I don't know if you've ever explained this on here. What's what's the love for Philly? How'd you become a, a Philly boy? How'd you become an Eagle? How'd I become an Eagles fan? Yeah, like funny, funny fast. Because you <laughs> fuck with Philly heavy, and I and I love that Philly, the city of brotherly love. I love that. So it it is a city of brotherly love. I'm curious. So if so, if people don't know, I mean, the people that fuck with me, or if people don't know, and my cousin can vouch for this, he's like my little brother. I got into sports late. Like, I growing up, I wasn't a sports fan whatsoever. I didn't watch no football, no basketball, no fucking anything. So, in 2008, which was like right after I graduated high school, um, I was friends with face. I was friends on Facebook with this guy from Philly, who, whose name is Ron. So he works in like uh, works for like you know the criminal justice system and all that, like um, and all that shit. But just kind of like following his page. Of course, he's Philly everything. Yeah. It's Eagles, Flyers, like he's Philly everything. So him showing his passion for the Eagles, and then it's like you know what. If I really want to start getting into sports a little bit more, I should probably like pay attention to some of these teams. And really, their color scheme stand that stood out. Midnight Green. Uh-huh. Like, follow I think them. that's hard as fuck. Follow so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna follow them. And funny enough, is that later on down the line, because he saw how much I grew to love my f- football team and everything. Uh-huh. He gave me the title of an honorary Philly boy. So I was like, well, which is funny, though, because yeah. now it took me years to, um, like, we've been friends since that moment, actually, in 2008. So it's a little bit ten, over 10 years. Funny enough, I didn't meet him until, like, 2020, I think. It took a minute. But he's always been busy, you know, and everything. But we got to meet uh, for the first time face to face. It was pretty brief. I was like, man, you are what you say you are, bro. Like, you really are what you say you are. And, bro, he's tall as shit. Like, making me look short. <laughs> That's love, bro. Yeah. Well, you really, you really enjoy it there. Like, 
like and, and and outside and and that's the crazy thing though, bro. It's like outside of football. Now that I start getting into poetry, yeah. because man, nobody knew I was a poet. Yeah, this is innocent, you know, person dealing with anxiety, high depression. Um, you know, even thought about committing suicide. Like I was pretty much the shell of like so much darkness and everything. So after overcoming that, going to Columbus State uh-huh. and seeing the fact that, okay, there's a lot more to life right now. Like we could really, we should be really like traveling and enjoying ourselves. So that's the reason why in 2015, uh, once I got my car, um, cause I got my car in 2014, but 2015 is really the year I started kind of like getting my feet wet a little bit with traveling. Mm-hmm. So I, my very, very first Philly experience, and I'll never forget it. Like, it was 2015. One of my bros actually came with me, so I didn't go by myself. Okay. So, for it to be my first time, like, going to the city, I didn't go alone. And people think, like, but now, yeah, I, I am going to travel alone. If y'all want to come with me, just let me know. But since it's that moment... Vibe, it's a different kind of trip when you go by yourself. Oh, no, it's, 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 it's bro, solo trips, driving down you know, the mountains and the tunnels, like, bro, every, it's so relaxing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Solo trips are fucking relaxing. And you on your own time. That's what I like about solo trips. Exactly. You get to eat what you want to eat, see what you want to see, <laughs> and, uh, and rest as much as you want to rest. And I'm not restricted to any responsibilities. I mean, exactly. don't, don't get me wrong. Shout out to all the great fathers. You know, Father's Day is coming up tomorrow, but you know, I'll, I'll be the, that great uncle with the plenty of nephews and nieces and all that. Like, cool. But, like, for me personally, like, getting this opportunity to, like, really, you know, dive deep into really why I was meant to do this shit. Yeah. You know, Philly's like no other, though. It really isn't. So, yeah, I love like, the food. I love the scenery. I like the people. I know a lot of people, you know, aren't used to that Philly, Jersey, New York type of, you know, aggression and type of person they are. But I love that shit. I love the energy. I love that a person to tell you like, yo, that poem was ass or they'll tell you like, yo, that was the best poem I ever heard. Like, I love that. I like that open and honesty and I can feel a person being real with me. You dig what I'm saying? They're not just telling me what I want to hear. And I mean, and yeah, and like that's pretty much kind of like what I got off of it. I mean, I didn't start really learning about the actual creative scene in Philly until 2020, which was funny enough before the pandemic hit. Yeah, I went to an uh, open mic called Uptown Open Mic um, that was owned by um, two or this married couple, well, couple or whatnot, but still, shout out to them. Uh, Leon X and um, Slim Diddy Mel, like they were really like just the whole vibe that they put together, you know, for different creatives and everybody to come together. It was beautiful. Like there was like they had so many different rooms where you could hold events. You know, there was a whole basement for Twenty Friendly. Like, and I met you know a few other cats um, at that time, which I've still stayed in contact with. Uh, since then, so like anytime I go to Philly and whatnot, I make sure to um, you know see if I can link up with them and whatnot. Now, mind you, you know, and a couple of them they do um, you know music and all that, but they're both you know in their own little lane and shit. So, like one of them, I actually actually was funny. Both of them I actually linked up with on the last trip. Um, Word. Like out of nowhere though and shit, like. I saw them back in February because, like I said, I've been to Philly like four times already this year. And I'll talk about each of them separately. But, yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of like funny enough that since that moment in 2020 and now really late September, the minute I went to Voices of Power for the first time, that's literally that was the start of me now figuring out, oh, there's a lot to do in this city. So like, that's who you going to. Your that event for the first time. What what was what were you like 
What was your anxiety <laughs> like? What was your stress like? What was your confidence like? Whew. Great, great question. Okay. So, I don't know if anybody notices, but I've performed four times now. And I've only been four times. So, first time, it's, 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 it's pretty nerve-wracking. Now, granted, from what I understood, because I did their third Tuesday show called The Poets Day. So they have it every third Tuesday, and then their main okay. is on first Saturdays. So, okay. But I think at the time, they weren't recording footage. They usually do, like, for their main Saturday shows, but I think at the time, there was no footage recorded. However, I did get one, I did find out one of my bros, uh, Yogi, ended up recording the whole uh, performance and shit, so... Oh, nice. I ain't gonna lie. It was it was nervous. I was like, oh man. <laughs> like, y'all don't know who the fuck I am and shit. <laughs> like, I know, I know some I know, I know some about y'all and shit. Like, I'm I'm you gotta think, I've met Deadly Pins, which you know, that's a, which I'll talk about that later with the poets retreat. Like, there's just it was just so much talent in that room. And of course, at the time they had the open mic list, so you pretty much had to be one of those first like 15 or 20. Yeah. I'm up on the list. And mind you, doors don't open till seven. People are lining up as early as like new. Like it got that serious. That's how big Words and Power has grown. And they just celebrated uh twelve years back in April. So but now that they do the that's huge. Yeah, it bro, like it's like and just like every experience afterwards that I was able to you know be a part of, like <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. Like I'm telling you, once we get a group of us, like let let's take over Philly too. Mm -hmm. But once they get to Detroit, like it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. Like it's gonna be fucking phenomenal, bro. And like. And shoot, like each performance I've been on, like fortunate enough to bless the stage and shit, like I just be like thinking in my mind, bruh, I wish some of my peoples was here. Yeah. <clears throat> like I'm by myself. Mind you, the one I just did on June, there was actually another Ohio poet that was there. And I wasn't alone that night. Oh no. Nice. And he and he got to bless the stage. Um it goes by spoken word mellow uh, from Cleveland. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he, he he went crazy. I was like, yeah, we oh. even got to make a trip to Cleveland, for real. And Sissy. I was going to say, June 28th, I got a show at Temple of Passions, which I'll be performing at. Um, I, I, there, I know there's still tickets for, um, you know, to be in the audience and whatnot, but I think, from what I understood, I guess it was like 20 slots. I happened to take the last one, by luck, and I've always kind of wanted to perform for them, so... That's Gay me. Good, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. You've been doing big things, man. And I'm glad you pointed out, you know, the anxiety and the stress. And this is something that constantly doing these shows helps with, but it doesn't cure it. <laughs> I mm -hmm. still have shows where I got to kind of like, you know, give myself a minute to really adjust, to really get present and take in what's happening because you're jitters just want to be all over the place you just want to you want to do this poem and do this one and <laughs> wear Bruh. how your shirt look and you like fuck <laughs> listen like every every show i'm telling you like every open mic and get them like like the the love i've been shown going to these shows like we can start back as february right so of course i went down there the week Yes, we should have won the Super Bowl. Fuck the Chiefs. That's all I'm going to say about that. But that been like that whole week, I got to, I went to the show on Thursday. They do it like every other Thursday. It's called Funky Verbs, Funky Words. Oh, not nice. It's 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 a it's a, it's a vibe, bro. <clears throat> like black. It was at a black owned venue uh, called the Bayou uh, Jazz Lounge. So it was like an open mic basically event. In order to sign up, you had to uh, reach out to the host. Who's also a poet, an actress, host? Like she does a lot of things, but she's she's pretty, she's pretty dope. She's she's definitely dope. I will say that. And fortunate enough, I went two other times. Right, I went for my birthday in March, which was March second, 
I came back and did their shit. And then, <clears throat> out of nowhere, right? <laughs> so, the week I left in June to do my tour, you know, my King Luce summer open mic tour, I saw that they were having it again. However, the venue changed. So, it was at a whole different venue. It was that it was pretty much at the uh their studio, like okay. So basically it was a it was a building that has like a bunch of different suites. Um in North same Philly. People just different venue. What's that? It was the same people, just different venue. Yeah, same people, just a whole different venue. But a different format changed too. Okay. So instead of it being like your normal open mic, I guess, they had they still had the open mic portion. It was only for like maybe the first like hour or so. But then they were highlighting 10 spotlight artists. They were going to do five poets and five musicians. Mm. So I'm thinking to myself, like, well, I'm going to buy this ticket. Yeah. And so and so I get to, you know, be the, one of the first ones to sign up on the open mic. Because I'm like, I don't even know what this format is about. It sounds dope. Yeah. It sounds fucking fire. Taking some chances. But and I'm then like all of a sudden, they were like, oh, you're going to be one of the spotlight artists. I was like, what? <laughs> Excuse me. Who, who who said I signed up for this? Okay, universe, man. Bro, the universe, the universe, right time. Bro, and and when I tell you the live band, oh my gosh! Like the drummer, the guitarist, like literally killed my whole set. Like we pretty much got to do, we pretty much got to do like compete with music though too, but I love a phenomenal live band. That shit is different experience. Oh, like like they like they they like I did the struggle poem right. Yeah, I did the poem back in 2017. Yeah, because that's that 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 became the catalyst as to why I should be doing what I'm doing right now. So, planted that seed, but that's how it goes your whole career. That's how we gonna keep doing it you know what i mean like of course I, and i had to and then like when i heard just the drummer and the guitarist going in i wanted to stop performing i just wanted to look after them like it was that good bro <clears throat> you be you you would just forget like wait a minute you performing and, and they're playing music in the background like i love the music man because it's something i can like it's a line you can walk like yeah. you just doing a poem with no mu- acapella you out there by yourself Mm-hmm. You got to remember your steps. When you got music, you can just ride the beat, for real. Exactly. You don't got to be on beat. You just got to flow. Your cadence got to be with the... I, I've been practicing doing some shit with, like, live bands, because I want to do, like, a live album, poetry album, you feel me, but just, like, soft music playing in the background. But it's going to be different type of poems. And I think that'll really catch the crowd, because music just connects with your soul. I feel like poetry a lot connects with your heart or your brain. Music hits your soul. <laughs> you can feel that shit in yeah. your soul. I ain't never really <laughs> felt a poem like that. I felt a poem like I could empathize with it. You know what I mean? I could understand what they were feeling in this moment. But music, that shit takes me to a whole another place. So I feel like when we start mixing the poetry and the music, that's I mean, it's gonna be hard not to be a fan of the band, especially when they lit. It's mm-hmm. gonna be hard not to be in the audience like, on stage. <laughs> you feel me? Like yeah. and just you don't like hear this type of shit every day. <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> Man, yeah. I'm gonna be breaking, rocking with the beat, but I feel like that's the fun of poetry. Like it's you mm-hmm. really just out there having fun, you know what I mean? And I, from my point of view, it would seem like you, you know, you enjoy this. I've seen you in a lot of different seasons of writing, you know, in different years that you've been writing. And the thing I see that's been growing the most is is the confidence. You know what I mean? Especially even how you deliver your pieces. And that shit's every, it's, it's been amazing to watch, bro, for real. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, it's like, it's like, okay, so it's like this post, right? <laughs> and I got that out my my guy, the poet bull, who's the host of Voice of the Power, like the new host. Okay. Uh, but he had a post, uh, which I, re- I reposted uh, like the other day, not too long ago. 
And I think he was finishing up like a, I think he had a feature, I want to say. It, it was some, something random, like, but it was just outside. And then he just pretty much recorded himself saying like, uh, and I really thought I was really mid out here. Like I wasn't that fire. Like I wasn't that gas. Like I wasn't that za. What? So it's like, okay. That's a reminder to myself. Either way, like it's a reminder to my actual self to be like, you know what? Can I stop doubting myself a little bit? Yeah. I mean, yes, we're still going to have it from time to time. I get that. But I still have my awkward moments a little bit, though. Like, I'm trying not to be, obviously, a rude or an asshole, especially yeah. if really, if people really, really actually fuck with my shit. So, mm-hmm. giving me compliments and all that. So, like, I mean, I will say this though, like I've and also been working on my theatrics a little bit, you know, because like with performances and just watching other artists and how they use that to of course to enhance the poem one night. So I've been trying to at least work on that with some of my poems and everything. Um Yeah. I mean I still watch I still watch some of my videos, especially looking at the hand motions I'd be doing. Some of it, I think some of it is just natural in a sense. And knowing no, it be hundred percent natural, I swear I'll be rehearsing that shit. I don't either. So it like it's what feels right in the moment. I go with it like fuck it. Right. <laughs> but like but like but like for example with the struggle beast, right? Because I'm talking about police brutality. The minute <clears throat> minute I did the Philando Castile first one, where I talk about, you know, fifteen years later. The struggle remains the same. Oh, this time, I bet you're ready to play the blame game. Well, where to start? Oh, wait, it's already been started. Over 400 years of hard labor, y'all must think we're retarded. History is repeating. When will it ever stop? From racism to pedophilia to trigger happy cops, and then I do this. You know, those same cops that always target blacks. We can't even step outside without looking over our backs. Next thing you know, it, you're cruising in the Cadillac DeVille. Then I do pull over, shot seven times. You swear that was Philando Castillo. So it's like I'm trying to work. I'm trying to like I'm saying I'm trying to work my theatrics a little bit and some of my poetry and whatnot. Maybe not all of my poems may require it, but at the same time, <clears throat> I'm really trying to like enhance that as part of my performance. Which would be good for you because you you touch a lot of stages. You perform a lot. You got performance pieces. But I do, I agree. I think natural is the best way to go in that sense. I think some people are just really good at rehearsing and getting it down pat, you know what I mean? But for me, like, and people that that are writers, I think it's just when you're performing, you can't write certain shit, you dig? Like, you just got to do it. (laughs) You can't really prepare or plan for it. Like, you just got to do it. In that moment, whatever it feels right. And I think it's just how you grow is putting yourself in that moment a lot of times and watching yourself, studying yourself and rehearsing. You dig like but everything you said, bro, is is on point. I think um there's so many great poets that are out there that people are becoming more aware of. And I think this is the best thing that's for the culture because it's gonna push everybody to go harder you dig it's gonna keep making all of us elevate because we all want to be at the top of our game we all want to be on the stage you feel me and it helps to get on the stage when you've already spent your time in the crowd so a lot of people season like it's just being in the audience i spend some years just being in the audience i won't even perform i'll just go support the poets i feel like it's a give and take you know what i mean so how do you feel like you deal with being in the audience? Like, are you really trying to get on stage? Or are you writing in your notepad? Like, what what do you do when you're watching other poets on stage? So, so pretty much whenever I'm not performing and I'm just like recording. Okay. Yeah. So now if I'm, if my thing is, if I know who's being featured, I'm going to support them either way, right? Mm-hmm. So even if I'm not performing, and even if it's like actually an open mic, of course, there's been plenty of times I haven't been chosen. Mm-hmm. But I'm just immersed 
into everybody's performances and shit. So just kind of, I'm still studying, okay. like mentally in a sense. Yeah. So I'm going to like, you know, figure out <clears throat> what can I do to, you know, incorporate that into my game a little bit. And shoot, like, especially like, um, I'm working on some new material right now. Uh -huh. I haven't, like, actually, I really haven't written nothing in maybe a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Like, and what's crazy, I took my, every time I go to Philly, I take my notebook and never write. It's it's weird. I don't know why. It, it, it's it's, it's mind-blowing in a sense, because you would think with all the inspiration, but it's just like, again, I'm so in the moment at the yeah. time. Yeah. So, like, for me to like, go through and write and everything, especially if I have poems picked out. Because, you know, a lot of this is going to be new to them anyway, unless exactly. they already heard it. So, But still, even yeah. then, they're not hearing it every other month. You know what I mean? True. So I, it, I, is, it is all still... I, I agree with you, and I think that's a fine line we all have to walk as artists that you still have to have a life. You know what I mean? Your whole life can't be writing. And mm -hmm. I think this is one of the lessons for these newer poets that poetry is a lot more than just what you're writing. You got to also go listen to it. You got to be around it. Shit, you got to smoke a blunt or have some food with a poet. You know what I mean? Y'all got to converse right, with right, each right. other. Exactly. You dig? <clears throat> All of that changes who you are and how you approach it. You feel me? So when we in these spaces, I'm, I'm the same as you. I have nights where I just don't, I don't work. I don't try to dissect people's poems and look for little lines I can write. <laughs> I yeah. just listen. You feel me? I, I'm just there in the audience as a person who just came to hear poetry. And I think I have to do that because I know this is something that's going to be a part of my life. So I don't want to just do it one way and then get burnt out on it, you know, and then take this long break. It's hard to come back from. Like, I want to decide when I take a break. Like, or, you know, right now, and for me, I've been, I write so much when I'm like working on a book, you know what I mean? So I've just been writing hella poetry. When I publish these two books, like I'm taking a break from writing, like all together. <laughs> Bro, you've been I'm going. taking a break. <laughs> and I just want, because you, I want to, I want to readjust my mind. I want to experience new things. Like you were saying, I want to watch new movies. I want to eat new food. I want to change my mind about things. And then reflect and read my old shit because a lot of people skip that part like you have to read your old work because you mm -hmm. have to know where you were to know fucking where you're trying to go you know what i mean right. and how you gonna get there so for me it's i always review my old shit what i'm learning to do is not tweak my old shit <laughs> it's just right. you know because we see through different lenses now and you you like oh shit no i would change this and say this differently and just I'm learning. I think that's what releasing the books has helped me do is like, that's, that's the piece. Like, that's it. I'm not changing it. It's done. It is complete. There's nothing that needs to change. I'm going to take this inspiration, we'll call it, and I'm going to use this towards the next poem. You feel me? And mm -hmm. that's, that's difficult. That's, that's why I'm taking another break too. I just want to do other shit for a while. <laughs> I've been writing crazy for like the last five years. It's gonna. It's one of those experiences. Like just hearing, so, like the like so, like the talent, bro. Yeah. Like it's it's just like you you. Of course, you got Philly poets. You got poets from Jersey, poets from New York, poets from who knows. You can travel from North Carolina for all you care. Like that's the reason why. Like I've been driven to like really get myself out there. Like of course, I know there's other cities I gotta go to. Yeah, like, but Philly primarily, the culture, the aspect is is incredible, bro. Like even even with the all the shows that I did this week, right? So I did. Um, so like Monday, there's a spot at Flex Space called Open Vibe Philly. They do it like the first Mondays. Um, but shout out to Boogie Mandela, who's the host. Um, but yeah, they do like all creatives. M pretty much, majority of the people were doing music that night. I was like, I think okay. they only know it. Okay. I got up there, bro. When I tell you, I was so damn high. I f I half asked. I my like people. doing shows with just musicians. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Don't get me wrong. Like, like people are going really in. listening to the lyrics. 
Yeah, people were going in and whatnot. I mean, like, but at the same time, them niggas was not caring. I was like, okay. I was like, that's my time. But at the same time, I, w- I will say, because I told him about the dip guy. Yeah. Like I said, Philly has now got hooked on to the dip guy. I'm just saying. Turn up. I, I, I does my shit, though, out there. So, but... They said the next time I guess I come to one of their shows, which, like I said, I have to plan it perfectly. So around that first Monday, then they said they were going to hook me up with a free vending spot. Mind you, the shit is eighty bucks. I was like, <laughs> like I'll take that. Like I'll take that. <laughs> but so I mean, it's just like so much love that people's been showing. Like I said, just for me being me, I'm always going to be me. So. Yeah. And then, like, especially one of my other favorite poets, let me tell you, bro. Uh-huh. You hear her. Like, my thing is, she just started performing this year. And she's that lethal. I'm just like, hold up. Like, ma'am, I need receipts. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just started performing this year. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. But... But yeah, she she yeah she like man. Sound natural. I don't, I don't know if you did my favorite poem though, which I was happy about about the flower thing and whatnot. Like you have you have to go you have to go through and look look on the voice of power page. I just know it's posted. But shout outs to Lex, unapologetically as she goes by. So, That's but yeah, yeah, yeah I'm like, gonna look for that video. I was about to say like the favorite. I was like man, but just like how she's like, bro just continues to get better and it's like man yeah. whoo the inspiration out here man yeah it's like lit. It's, it's lit, bro. what i can do to, sh- to make my pen better so for what so because i want to i want i want you <laughs> i want to know what happened you posted something about uh you bombed at a show like the night you got there or something <clears throat> oh that was the first oh the open by philly yeah, so what happened? I mean, why do you consider it a bomb? Why did I consider it? Well, because I, let's see, drove seven and a half hours. I was high. And in a, in a sense, like, I know, I like, I already knew it was already on my tour. So I was bound to bless the stage anyway. It's just, I probably should have just only stuck to the one poem. Like, the first poem I did was the life poem. I did, I did fine with that. It's just when I started doing Love Me Black Part 3, mm-hmm. I started forgetting. Uh, and, I, and, I, and then just like I, w- I drew a blank. Didn't really want to get my phone out just to finish the shit only because at the same time, they really weren't, in a sense, paying attention. That's the reason why Tuesday for the rest uh, of the show on. I see what you're saying. Like, I was, I, was, I was pretty much more concerned about Tuesday and the rest of the day on. Don't, don't get me wrong, though. Like, it's still it's still a vibe. Yeah, that still like, sounds like a like, win, y'all. Like, it's still, still a problem, like, and, it, and it's 420 friendly, so it's like, I'm not going to be mad at that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's like, still a win. I mean, I wouldn't consider that a bomb with the, you know what I mean? Considering the circumstances, you had to drive almost bro. eight hours. And then they thought I was cooking dip the same night. I was like, you uh, got to be That would have been a crazy fucking night. Bruh, I was, it was not happening. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got me fucked up. You know, first off, I didn't get to the city until like six. The show started at seven. Damn. You you expect me to cook? <laughs> no. Mm-mm. I will need to be literally there the night before, which is funny enough, right? So <clears throat> the all woman open mic, right? Which uh-huh. my God, bro. When I tell you, like some like and this is just a whole dope concept. In my opinion, and like this would be perfect for you know us because, like I said, we can't perform. So, <clears throat> shout out to the homie Jay Smooth, who started this event. It's called Women Wine and Words. Okay. And the, and the and the slogan is "Home to where the women spit and the men and everyone else sit." That means there's no male performers. It's all women, open mic performers, and features. That'd be hard. And, and then it's like when you, if you buy a ticket, you also get a complimentary glass of wine. Okay. Like, why not? So, <clears throat> I was just gonna go there to support either way, like, because I've I've been wanting to, you know, see what this is like, and, but then I got called up to be a last minute vendor. I was like, okay, 
it's kind of funny though because I actually wanted to vend either that show or Funky Verbs because I had to vend that or Sunday show that I went to called DTO uh, Poetic Vibes. But so when I did the woman's show, I was like, yeah, they went crazy and supported, bro. I sold a couple books that night. Nice. Like really sold a couple books and pretty much like over half of my Buffalo chicken dip pans. It was, it was dope, but they had a concept, right? Uh-huh. I guess it was like before the show started, they had like a couple of writing prompts and they were going to pick two, I guess, random guests like in the audience to go and spit against the prompt. Tell me why. Chosen. Even though, but we're random guests though. It's, even though it's still an all woman thing, but because I guess we're the random guests, I got called up to do one of the prompts. I was like, bro, I had to really come up with a one minute poem on the spot. I was like, now that's where my anxiety gets crazy, right? If I have to come up with something on the spot, bro, <laughs> like you tested me right now, but the prompt was, um, fuck, I, I think it was like, fuck you look like or something like that. And I can't remember what the second one, but I think I can. I know I can mind the two. But I had to go up against my bro, the poet bull, though, who's a legend at this shit. Like, he went crazy. Hey, I do want to try to do some shit like that. That'd be fun. Like, it, but it was, no, it was definitely a lot of fun. Shoot, like, it's got, it got recorded and everything, but I was like, and it's on my phone somewhere. I wish I could read it, but I was like, bruh, mind you, they already had the two people picked out. I was the third one chosen. Like, I was like, whatever. I'll play I'll play along with it and shit. So <laughs> that's funny as hell. So what was trip number four? So show number trip four. number yeah, this is this is that no, the whole thing I'm I'm going through my whole tour. So this is trip number four. Yeah. Um so like I mean I can kind of go through the I'll go let me let me go I'll, I'll back up a little bit. So I mean I was I meant show number four. Did you go on four oh. shows on the trip? I went on like seven shows. Oh, sure. I had hope. Okay. I had hope. All right. So what's show number four? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we went through we four more to go. We had open vibe Philly. I skipped Tuesday, which was called a night of words. Um, so that was actually the second show. The woman show was third, and then Funky versus fourth. Well, let me go back to the second. So a night of words was basically like an all poetry. Uh, like open mic thing and they had it at the exact same building where funky verbs was so basically three three of my shows that that week were in the exact same building oh. but just but, but in different suites that's different what, suite, but, yeah. like they just have a different ton of suites and shit I wish so. we had a venue like that here man that we could use they got one on campus <laughs> but we we need yeah. something like that yeah like and bro and like when you walk into like from the um, entrance, it kind of reminds you. It's almost like you're somewhat in, within a warehouse type ish because there's all that, there's also that uh, big ass, you know what you would call it, a warehouse like doors that you can open up and shit. So, yeah, the but then you go through the doors and then you just go up the elevator, or if you're on the floor, you know, like I said, there's different suite rooms. So I guess you can rent out. But uh, the spot I went to was on the third floor. It's basically in the same um, spot where Funky Verse was on Thursday, which is going to be coming up. But I was excited because it's like, I just wanted footage. So that night, and crazy enough, it almost never happened. Like, because the host came up to me and said, hey, you know, we had a good amount of people signed up, and then not, those people not coming and shit. But I'm like, well, like, I, I still want to perform. <laughs> like, I'm I'm trying to practice the struggle poem that I just memorized in my head. Like I want to make sure I because my thing is I was going to perform for Voice and Power, which is coming up. I'll talk about that. But I wanted I wanted to make sure I was prepared for that. So I we we still had the show. You know the people that were still there. It was still a vibe. You know I loved it. But he did say I guess which I'm pretty sure is going to happen the next time I come there, whenever that is. I guess the next show, if I'm able to go and attend, that I'll be able to get in on him. So, oh nice. I was like, well, yeah, just let me know. I'll try to keep up with dates, plan it out, 
and see if I can make it happen. Mm-hmm. That's all I can say about that. <clears throat> so, Let's do it. And Funky Verbs, I talked about already a little bit. That was the fourth show with the live band. Um, okay. Like a bunch of talented performers, like singers. Man, this singer from Jersey, bruh, who, who I shared the flyer with, who goes by Shay Davis. Man. Crazy singer. Crazy vocals, bruh. Even the uh, even the other um, homie, Don Juan, like both of them were just that talented at what they do. So, and then, of course, we had like other poets that went up on the open mic. First off, the one that had me weak, bro. This lady did a gangster ass fucking nursery rhyme. You know the whole about the Hickory Dickory Doc? Yeah. So he said, Hickory Dickory Doc, bitch, I will pull out that Glock. I said, whoa. I was like, hold up. Of course, run it back. I'm like, wait a minute. You said, pull out the Glock. Wait, where are we going with this? <laughs> I was like, I was so lost. But yeah, that was one thing. <laughs> Bro, it was so it was super lit. I got it on my snap. Um, but it was crazy. That's funny. Yeah, it was hilarious. But yeah, everybody did great that night. Um and and then next up we went I went to Jersey. That was show number five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now Jersey Jersey was a lot of fun. I mean Jersey being over the bridge of Philly. So what I did was uh, I went to see my bro that I always see in Jersey anyway because he's my plug out there oh. or that I go and kick it with. So I went to see him. Then I drove to Trenton, which is about 40 minutes from where he was at in Jersey. Got there on time. Um, it was in downtown Jersey or dra- downtown Trenton, which is pretty dope. I was like, okay. Downtown, I, see, I see downtown Trenton out here. Got to the spot. Um, pretty dope vibes. Um, the host himself, fucking phenomenal fire poet. Um, who goes up by Poetic Will. He's amazing. He's he's also been on Voice of Power too. I remember seeing like one of his clips and all that. He's nice. And then the host, who's also my dog, goes by the hot topic. But like, yeah, he he his wordplay is ridiculously crazy too so i got there uh mind you i was one of the uh you know i guess the spotlight open mic performers because there were supposed to have been three features but one of them didn't make it so it just ended up being two um so i did my poetically correct poem they actually they really fucked with that because i like i look back at the highlights now because i was like you see poetry yeah that's my bitch and I was like, that, that, that got him. I was like, yeah. Poetry is my bitch. We've been going back for long, more than 15 years. That's how long I've been doing this shit. This whole point. <laughs> but yeah, they show me a, a lot of love out there. Um, and then the features, bro. Mm-hmm. Like one of the features actually caught my book too. Um, nice. He was going to buy it that night, but I guess <clears throat> he had to run out, so I shifted to him, which I'm hoping he got it. I'll just, I'll definitely. Make sure to reach out to him and see if he got it. But um, yeah, that's fire. That's fucking phenomenal. And then the moment of truth, voices and power, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what, what? I don't know what else to say. <clears throat> so here's a here's a funny thing I said about this, right? Mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? All week long, or even all month long, rather. I was like, do you think I can go four for four? The four for four? I had to speak that Wendy's lingo. Do you think I'm going to get the four for four? And then throughout that week, I was like, let me find out I'll become the first poet to be on their stage. I was close. I was number two. (laughs) But the first male, because there were two women. Mind you, I went after my fucking favorite fire poet Lex I was like I just looked at myself like mm, I have to go after that Whew. sweet baby Jesus <laughs> like please save me man so I got up there 
um, you know, did my spiel and whatnot and just started going into it. Because the, basically, if you get called up, is you know, it's a raffle now. So as long as you get there uh, within the first, like, 30 minutes of doors opening, all you do is go to the host, fill out your name on the raffle or the raffle ticket, put it in a jar. It's just a random draw. So you never know whether you're going to go or not. But overall, just for poets in general, even if you don't get chosen, the vibe is just unmatched. Like there's, a, they do, they they do karaoke in between intermissions, fucking other different games. Like they have a game called like popping the question. Basically, there's two couples, and people are going to vote who you know had the best proposal. Mm. And if you're a poet, and and one of the poets was the feature, uh, Matt Capone. Mind you, I'm like, okay. Like, of course, the poet's going to spit. <laughs> like, that's what he does and shit. So I'm like, but the other one was the other guy who repped Ohio from Cleveland, spoke a word fellow. He was the other one that got chosen with, and it was two other girls. And Mellow kind of went in, but then when he asked the question, the girl said no. I was like, but because it was based on crowd reaction of who did it the best, Mellow still won, even though he got denied. Wow. I was like, that it was wild. I was like, I've never seen anything like that. But yeah, like they we just we just have they they just have so much fun, bro. Like it's it's fucking amazing. But I will say, you know, you get an opportunity to touch their stage, you need to show the fuck out. Mm. That's all I, that's all I gotta say. You know, they share their videos on YouTube. Um, you know, they also be posting, you know, the reels and everything of the performance or whatnot. So they actually reached out to me earlier. <clears throat> um, I think it might have been it actually might have been earlier today, I think, or yesterday. But pretty much you have they're asking you for permission if you want to be and whatnot. Because not of course there's certain poets they they might not want thirty. You right. know, being or home shared. Which I'm like, why not? I talked about the struggle. <clears throat> and my and like I said, i the the poem felt right that night. Um, because mind you, I've already done two nasty poems with them and then my life poem, which was from April. So I wanted to do the poem that's gonna serve me as a reminder mm. that I was actually meant to be a poet, like really doing this shit with this passion that I love for. So it's like and if people, you know, want, like once they post it too, because you know, I'm going to get shared it, essentially. Like I'm patient, obviously. Like, mm-hmm. and I got, and I already got a couple of the performance videos anyway that I posted to my personal YouTube. Um, so I'm trying to like start, you know, sharing content there more a little bit. I used to have a good amount of content in my early like late teens, <laughs> but there were some embarrassing times. <laughs> so, I mean, who knows? I might just create more content and share it there as well, but yeah. It's a win either way. It definitely is. <laughs> and then the final show, right, uh-huh. was called DTO uh, Poetic Vibes. Um, <clears throat> like I said, shout out to the, the host, Trish. <clears throat> it's actually Trish and the Poet Bowl that they host and whatnot. So, you know, there are four, four fire ass features. One of them being, again, my favorite poet, Lex. And then, of course, my guy, Cam Jones. You know, I had a rocket shirt and everything. I don't know if you can see it, but hold on. It's right. It says smoke my stress away, but. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it pretty much has a stress away pair and whatnot. You might as well just make me a brand ambassador. I'm going to tell him that, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I already got, like, damn near half, like, the, the, the side. It's just, it's a dope concept to me. Like, you got to pay my stress away, eat her stress away, eat my stress away, suck my stress away, like, or pray my stress away, laugh, like, so many different ones. And then he has, like, black owned versus everybody. So I've worn that whenever I'm a vendor. Like, it's black owned versus everybody. Fuck you mean. <laughs> so, but yeah, and then um, this other chick who goes by, uh, Maddie, and then this dude, Chaos, who's from Maryland. Um, but like all the course, all four of them shut it down. Of course, the dip god was the main reason why 
you know, I had to make sure to vent and also talk my shit. So I did part two to infatuate desires of someone I performed. And I slipped in ain't that a bitch a little bit because apparently we only had like either five minutes or one to two poems. I kind of figured I was going to go a little bit over, but I tried to speed through it. And kid you not, <laughs> Ken Jones ended up recording me in one of the, like the ain't that a bitch. Mm-hmm. Where I thought, oh, go ahead. You deserve to be a toxic whore. He started laughing <laughs> like right after I was like, oh, I, I, I had no idea, too. I'm just reposting it, like shout you out for recording me. I'm like, this nigga just laughed. <laughs> I was like, what? And then, um, oh, mind you, here's, here's the crazy thing, right? So, what, I, what, what I've noticed between Philly and here when it comes to me bending, Philly, like, you know, I make sample bands, right? So, mm-hmm. I, I do that so for people to try to buy. Philly doesn't give a fuck. They said, buy. I was like, oh, Okay. <laughs> Buy straight up. Okay. Like literally all the people that like I've seen perform out at all these shows and that they see me and all that, like just literally straight up said, Oh, how much is it? Buy up. I was like, You don't want to see you don't want to try it? Nope. Buy. I'm like, okay. Who's to say no, right? <laughs> like Thanks. who's to say no to that? I'm like, I'm not gonna say no to that. But at the same time. I'm not taking none of these samples home. I'm making that known every time I do this. So, but yeah, it's just like the tremendous support, man. That's love. It's fucking phenomenal. And then fuck. And then of course, this food can jump, man. This is why. This is why he's fucking hilarious like this. So I did my review. Like I'm starting to record people now of what they think about my dip because <laughs> my uh, bro Yogi John gave me that idea. Like, I don't know why I haven't been recording since I've been starting my business anyway, but I'm starting to do it more. Okay. So I recorded, I recorded them on Snap. <clears throat> you know, got Lex to tell me what you thought about the poll bowl. Then I, then I told Ken, I was like, what you think about it? He gonna talk about <laughs> my Philly cheesesteak dip is not a Philly cheesesteak dip. <laughs> he was like, this is like an Ohio steak dip. I was like, I'm like, sir, I went to a grocery store in Philly, though. <laughs> so, and technically is a Philly cheesesteak for real, though. Right. So, we're not in Ohio. Keep that in mind. You know, he, already, he of course, he fucks with the buffalo chicken. I already know that. Like, I got that review from the Laugh to Pain Away show, but he was trying to talk shit about the Philly cheesesteak. I'm like, bro, <laughs> go on somewhere. And then on top of that, you gonna call you gonna call Pisces liars? And I'm like, first off, bro, Leos are not, Leos are not that great. <laughs> I was gonna say Leos are not that great, bro. Don't don't try me. <laughs> Thank so, you, bro. But yeah, it, no, but yeah, of all course. Right. Overall, they fuck with it, so I'm just honored yeah. that everybody everybody fuck with it though. And that's good, man. That's something we need to see as business owners, entrepreneurs, hustlers, you know, brand, whatever, ambassadors, whatever you are. You need to see that love from other cities. It gives you more confidence and appreciation about your brand, but I think it gives you an honest scope of your brand, too. You know what I mean? You can't always just take one group of people's opinion. You got to get everybody's opinion. Because then, too, I think that'll let you know what you need to tweak in your business. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So, I man, I love cities like that because it shows everybody can win and everybody can support everybody. So, I think right. we just need to keep bringing that type of love back to the city, which we got a good, you know, infrastructure in the city. It's getting better, but right. we need to support each other a lot more on a local level. I think we can take a lot of um, tips from these bigger cities because Columbus is getting big. It's getting bigger. Yeah, it is. And there's well, more people, and there's more people coming out as artists and poets. So it, I, it's only right for us all to work with each other. It's like all of us, you know, all of us can do something big, and that, and that's like, and I get it. You know, everybody's been, including my Philly poets that I've met within these past four months, been asking me when am I going to move. I'm like, you covering my first three months of rent. I'm not fucking playing. 
I know how expensive it is to live out there, yeah. especially for a one bedroom. I know, especially a, a, in a nice neighborhood, mind you, not the hood. Like in a really nice, like apartment type complex, it's 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 expensive. Like, oh, yeah. <clears throat> but I will say this though, my bro, um, like I said, my um, you know, my plug and whatnot, he actually brought up the idea. Um, the one I go to to get you know my shit from. <laughs> he brought up the idea of possibly moving to Jersey, which I'm like, I'm not opposed to that. I'm like, I'm right by Philly. It's like I said, it's over the bridge. Like I'll still be right by it, but <clears throat> I guess like he said, was possibly looking for a roommate and whatnot. So it's like I know me personally, it'll really help me so much more in my development. I think, mm. <clears throat> mind you, I can, I can go now to the DMV area, fucking New York. Yeah. Like, like I, there, there'll be options though to travel to for different shows and but it's like do I really want to start over <laughs> like like I said it's, it's still weighing heavy but like I'm not gonna you know discount it I was talking about maybe two to three years but mm-hmm. anything can happen in that time frame so absolutely not, so my thing is I tell and I like I said I tell them I'm like I don't have a problem traveling because they, they even tell me, like, it feels like every other month you come in here. I'm like, yep. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> but I'm driven by this shit. Like, when I told people, when I get back to yeah. driving and getting a car, I was not playing with y'all. Which, by the way, I'm gonna. there's a couple things I want to talk about. So, first off, we're going to talk about my book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're going to wrap up on those, these two. That's way desires. Um, so it's available on Amazon, people. Um, I got physical copies too. If you want to sign, fifteen dollars only. Fifteen dollars. Listen, that's so reasonable. And mind you, bro, do you understand? Like, and and I think it's in different cities too. I want to say I heard it in Jersey and in Philly. I think it's different. So in Philly, they don't do the that's so reasonable part. It's just only fifteen dollars. And then it was either Jersey or somewhere else that did the same thing. They said, like, I think only $15, like, you would be something, like, foolish or something like that not to buy. It was something crazy. I was like, hold up. (laughs) People just be saying shit, like, all the way extra. I'm like, hold up. (laughs) Like, it it, got their flame. Like, everybody really got their shit, though. I was like, okay. (laughs) Because I'm because everybody, even though they only just say the only fifteen dollars in Philly, I'm still shouting. That's so reasonable, yeah. even if they don't hear me. <laughs> so, yeah. but um, but I will say this though, which is what I'm going to bring up too, and I'll share this with everybody. Mm-hmm. So there is a poets retreat, right? And this is where I'm going to share with all poets that are serious about doing this shit because I'm I'm clearly doing this because. Like I said, nobody's matching me. At least how I see it. Nobody's matching my passion right now. Mm-hmm. And my drive. So, <clears throat> there is a poets retreat that'll be at the end of September. It's from September 27th to October... I think it's 3rd? But it's in Houston. Um, so, I discovered this um, event <clears throat> via Instagram. So this page that I follow is called Deja Vu Spoke a Word Open Mic, which they do an open mic every uh, Thursday online. Like yes. if you ever want to... Yeah, I'll, I'll, send you the, I'll send you all the info. Mm-hmm. And I'll send you the flyer too. But the reason I wanted to bring this up is because, like I said, it's a week-long retreat and they have... They do a bunch of different stuff. So they go to different open mic shows. Um, then they, they have like a creative workshop um, that they do. And like, I think they go to like different bars and nightclubs and whatnot. But pretty much like it's a whole week long um, full of fun. That's just how I look at it. But you can either get general mission like by the day or you can pay for the week long pass. 
which they got general mission versus VIP. If you do the VIP, you get like all the perks that come with it. So, and what those include is so like for the open mic seat they go to. So the host is this dude, Mr. Reality, who goes by the voice, Mr. Reality. Mm -hmm. So he's a part of this group called the Deadly Pins Collective. So it like a basically some of the best of the best of the best poets like under that whole collective and <clears throat> he put like pretty much and, and mind you I know three of them that are in Philly that I've met that I've all heard speak and they are they are, they are the reason why they're a deadly pin for a fucking reason like I believe that shit so um, he's pretty much like the kind of the cur curator of the whole like event and whatnot, but Again, there's like different shows that you go to, and of course, you get to hit those stages. So if you get the VIP pass, which is four hundred dollars, it's pretty steep, but it's worth it if you really want to invest yourself into that, you know. Or you can uh, do it by the day, which they're like I think I want to say General Mission is like twenty five, but I think VIP is like seventy five by the day. But <clears throat> I invested in the week pass because. Again, you also get like a widening workshop out of that. I think that's going to be helpful for me. That's going to be huge. To really, to really, you know, step, really enhance my fucking, you know, pen and whatnot. However, if you get dubbed a deadly pen by Mr. Reality, like based off, you know, obviously he going he gonna to see you perform. And like every event you go to, like instead of signing your name on your open mic by yourself, you're going to be under the collective. So if you buy the VIP, you won't have to worry about signing up because you're under that collective, even if you're not a deadly bin. But if he sees fit, you know, after your performances and shit, like you really do this shit, and he actually gives you a pin, mm -hmm. mind you, you get your own personalized engraved pin with your stage name. Like, y'all can't tell me shit. <laughs> if I get my own fucking pen with my stage name on it, you can't tell me shit. Prices are going all the way up. God damn it. I say shit. Like, you could not tell me nothing, though. So, like, I feel like that's going to be a week work um, exploring and whatnot. And mind you, I haven't flown <laughs> since before the pandemic. So, oh, yeah. It, this is about to be fun. <laughs> I'll stick to the ground for a while. Bruh, I wanted to drive so bad and take the, like 16, 18 hour drive, but I didn't want to do that. Yeah, that's it. I'm not about to do that. that drive is real. It's it it, it, it would have been, been nice, but no. Nah. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to take the risk, even though uh, from what I heard, I guess it's gotten, I mean, we'll see, depending yeah. on how, how it goes. I think it, I think it is going to be a good opportunity, especially just to um, you know rub elbows with people who walk in the walk, you know the path we taking. Things exactly. we trying to do, they've done it already. That's the best people to talk to. I feel like in any field, no matter what you do, you got to speak to the people who do this at a high level. Yeah, you just gonna soak up game. You know what I mean? But yeah, that that sounds dope. That sounds like a good opportunity. I, I think. As those things are popping up, it's the perfect time to get a part of them, especially while they're they're beginning. Right, you know, the, these ideas can take off, <laughs> and yeah. you have your name attached to you know that progress. Listen, and that's and that's literally what I what I've been trying to do. Like I said, every stage I'm going to touch, I have something to prove. Mm -hmm. Regardless, regardless if I don't need if I don't need validation, I know I know I'm great. Mm -hmm. But I'm still gonna have to prove it to somebody's stage and let right. them see and have have them, you know, be the judge or whatnot. But you know, there's always gonna be something that I can step up <clears throat> with my game and everything. And I think with the retreat, mind you, one of the open minds that they're doing is right about now. The minute I saw that name, bro, I was like, shut up and take my fucking money. You think I'm 
That's like being on Voices of Power. I mean, I, it may not be as big, but like for an open mic in Houston, I know about them because I follow them and I share their videos. I'm like, yep. They're huge. <laughs> I'm like, yep, I'm on that stage. Yeah, I'm, I'm on that. home I'm doing that night, but I'm on that stage. <laughs> I love the whole atmosphere and the ambiance. Look like they're the tree house. Yes. That's one of the hardest shows I've ever seen. Poetry. Yes, yeah, bro. Like I'm, I'm fortunate to touch voices and power. Like that's always gonna be love. Like everybody there shows bad love, but right about now, yeah. Like I gotta, like I gotta have the perfect poem for that night. It's even a hard ass name. <laughs> like right about now, Dang, poetry. Sweet, like yeah, that whole show is lit. And some of the and some of the Philly poets has been out there. Like well, at least some of the poets I've seen perform in person. Like the poet bull, he's been out there. Fucking uh, Mac Bone was out there recent, I think. Like, like all these different. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> put my name on there. I don't care. I'm paying for it. I got my flight booked. We done. <clears throat> the only thing I, the only thing I need is my Airbnb. So the only four poets who are getting out there and traveling and experiences mm -hmm. for the first time. These type of shows we talking about, them gonna be the ones you're glad you went to, or they're gonna be the ones that's hard not to regret not going to. You dig? Like, mm -hmm. so for me, I just take that leap. Like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You dig? And I go, and I'm like, what's the best that can happen? You dig? And when you get there, it's all type of shit, shit you couldn't have planned for. True. I'm, I'm, yeah, you have to travel with this. You gotta see because right. everybody got different lingo. And it'll help you with your cadence. You know what I mean? But also, I think it'll add different style and different flavor. Because that's the point of all this. We helping each other become stronger writers. Mm. As much as we trying to put out, you know, great shit. Because if we all get good, we all going to be putting out great shit. Right. That'll make the shows that much better. You know what I mean? That'll make our connections that much better. So we all win in the end, you dig? And that's the plan. You feel me? So what what do you want to leave the people with, my guy? <clears throat> so man, one thing I do want to leave out with. Um, so buy my book, motherfuckers. <laughs> That's all I got to say. But nah, I appreciate y'all. But um, one thing I will leave out with is uh, like like I said, for people like me, yeah, that didn't really know what to do or how to really go about things when it comes to this poetry shit. See, mm -hmm. just continue to be you. Like, you know, obviously observe, listen, you know, seek guidance and whatnot uh, where need be and just continue to elevate your game. You know, and crazy enough, you know, I guess I'm having also some OGs watching me too. Yeah. Which is like, and funny enough is like I know exactly who it is, but it's like okay, you're really actually watching me, watching me. Am I like, because I guess I'm I'm born to I'm born I'm born to do this shit basically. Yeah. So I'm basically built and made to do this poetry shit. Like I said, for starters, I'm built for the shit. Oh, you? Huh? Stop being a hating ass nigga, always throwing a bitch fit. I'm just saying, but. Yeah. Like you just gotta continue to, you know, push push hard for yourself. Um, you know, this is pretty much I've learned that over time as I've started to grow and get better and better and, and just seeing the reactions of people, it's like okay, it's still the same reactions that's been since like two thousand seven. Mm -hmm. Like they really, really fuck with your shit. Like you might wanna like say you you're you're the shit basically. And there was like um oh there was a post I shared on Instagram the other day. I wish I could remember it. But basically it says something along the lines of like stop ignoring like the talents or whatever that you have. Like the proof is there, like mm -hmm. the people see it, you're seeing it, like stop denying that. The proof is already there. Like you know, you're that good. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you were meant to do this shit. So 
you got you got the evidence that you need. So obviously, with me doing these shows, um, traveling, having other poets, you know, take notice, which I will manifest. One day, I will become a feature mm-hmm. for Voice of Power. I don't know when though, but at the same time, I'm just going to continue to elevate my game. You know, when that mm-hmm. time comes, it will come. However, I will say I am going to bend there too. So I did make that as one of my goals. So, but yeah, that's one thing I definitely want to leave out with everybody. But just like continue to push yourself um, as much as I've been doing. And I just want to see everybody win. Like, there's no reason for hatred. For what? Man, I agree 100%. Yeah. So tell them again where they can find your book. All right. So. I'm going to pull it right back out, but you can find my book, Infatuated Desires. It is available on Amazon for $15, $14.99 to be exact. Um, you can also get the Kindle version if you want it on your Kindle. Um, you can also buy a physical copy for me if you're in the local area of Columbus, Ohio. I have copies if you want it signed. Um, you know, DM me. I'm everywhere on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. <clears throat> you know where to reach me. Um, and I'll get a sign for you. Or I can even sign in and mail it to you. You know, I got people <clears throat> that, you know, live elsewhere in other states that want a copy of my book too. So I should well, do that as well. But just now. Your boy's working though. Yes, sir. Like I said, got the foe for foe. And I'm telling you, like, when I tell you, and especially voice from voice of power, like for real, have been changing lives of poets though. So like, don't be surprised when my video gets shared and I'm gonna tag motherfuckers, because that's what I do. Don't be mad if you see me elsewhere getting booked out of state. On, on some other crazy shit and whatnot. So, like I said, I already got at least one or two that want me booked in Jersey. So, like, anything is possible. That's a fact. You just got to believe. So, yeah. Man, I just want to congratulate you one more time, man. I'm definitely super proud of you, bro. And uh, keep striving. <clears throat> Appreciate you, man. Yes, so you so gonna long. be serving up next Thursday speech therapy? Oh yeah, speech therapy. So listen, people, Thursday, June twenty second, the Dip God is gonna be back. Y'all not ready for that whatsoever. I'm gonna need y'all to come out. My guy here, Good Life Russ, will be your feature and your host. And keep in mind, they say. From what I understand, they say it's supposedly 420 friendly. I'm just saying, you can't be mad at that. And come get this dip. Like, we're about to have some fire dip, we're about to have some fire poetry. Like, you can't be mad at that. You ain't gonna know what hit them, man. It's it's going and I'm gonna do the feature a whole new type of way, whole new type of format, and see what people think. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be a vibe. Oh, it, it sure is. It's, it, it's gonna be a vibe either way. So like, I'm I'm excited for it. And uh, oh, another I gotta let me plug in the rest of my shows before we get out of here. But uh, so June eighteenth, um, which is tomorrow for Father's Day, uh, Queen of Street Poet has a show called The Revival of My Experience featuring Jacob and also Sons of April who will be singing. Um, definitely, you know, come out. I'll be there performing. I thought about doing dip, but I'm not going to do that. I apologize. We, we You're going to have to come to speech therapy for that. So, I'm sorry. But, come out, support the poets. Um, like I said, it's open to all creatives. You can even sign up if you want to, you know, dance, rap, sing, whatever. So, it's going to be a great time. Uh, and then we got June 20th, my guy, our guy, be the poet, 
That's right. We'll be having a new open mic that is every other Tuesday, from what I understand, starting June 20th. Um, it's called The Wolf on Mock Road at the Healing Nest with DJ Teeth. You know, spinning tunes and shit. It's about to be a great vibe for that. And then we got, you know, speech therapy June 22nd. You already know the vibes on that. June 23rd, my guy, bear with the pen at Say That. About to be even more nuts. It's also, crazy week. At, also that same night, though, don't get me wrong, because I was close to getting the ticket, but we're going to shout out Miss Camille. So dope. Y'all need to go check that out as well at Wild Goose. So, okay. You can't make say that. Go to Wild Goose Creative. Like, we, we supporting everybody that night. I don't care. That's how we do it. And then, um, June 28th, I'll be in Cleveland for Temple of Passions. Uh, they have a show called, it's called Mike and Sip, which is like, uh, I think it's like a 20 diff or a list of 20 different, like, poets, MC, singers. Should be a vibe. It's definitely going to be a vibe. If you're interested, um, you know, tickets are still available, but I ended up taking the last performer ticket, so I'm excited for that. Yes. Never performed for them before, so I'm going to talk my shit. And then, yeah, and then July 1st, um, a big one called The Color of Summer. Man, when I tell you, like, I don't even know how. <laughs> But it happened. But the fact that I get to share a stage, not only with my dog Cody, who's been doing this shit for a minute, mm -hmm. but I also get to share a stage with an Emmy-winning poet. Like how? How? In JG, like how? How? It, it's crazy, right? Like I want y'all to come out for that as well. Like yeah, that's you know. At, at the Columbus Museum of Art, you got to dress to impress, pretty much. You know, I think the theme is like summer colors. I'm going to be dressing nice. I don't know what my outfit is yet, but <clears throat> and I can wear like maybe a nice dress polo and maybe some dress pants. I'm trying to keep it as simplistic. I'm not wearing a suit. It's too hot for that. <laughs> it's too damn hot for that. But um, yeah, come out for that. It's from 7 to midnight. Um, not only just poetry, there's comedy, there's a fashion show, there's a silent auction. Yes, tickets are pretty expensive, but if you want them discounted, tap in with me. I'm just saying. Because I'm one of, the, one, of the, one of the features, that's all I'm saying. But it's going to be a great time. So, um, And then also, I'm going to promote this as well, even though it's not my event. Mm -hmm. But ever since I've been going to these painting sips, shout out to my guy, George Lee. Like, I'm going to need y'all to go and support my guy. It's called Paint, Poetry, and Potions. Like, it's Paint and Sip. And, it's, and, and, he, and the fact that he does different things, like, of, like, music, music errors, come on now. Like, hip-hop. Biggie and Tupac is coming in July. Well, you know, as the thing. Mm -hmm. You pretty much, you come there, get your drinks, you got a big in pop, inspired canvas, get your paints, enjoy some good food. DJ's basically spinning nothing but big in pop tunes all night. That sounds like a vibe. Come on now. Come on now. And, then it's, and then it's poetry and intermission. Like, mm. I get it though. Like, I'm late, literally, literally I, and I kid you not, bro. I kid you not. Majority of the events I go to, I'm either the only guy there that's painting. And it's just nothing but women, which I love it. Don't get me wrong with that. Like, it's cool. Or they might have maybe one or two couples. Mm. I'm like, yeah, we need, we, 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 come on now. Come on now. I did Joe Scott. I did Prince. Like, I literally got like six canvases since last December. Like, that's how much I've been having fun. And and, and on top of that, like, it's another way of relieving stress in a sense because it's like, okay, like, I just want to get in my creative bag now. I just want to paint, just vibe. I'm already high anyway. I'm like, just painting and shit. So, enjoying the good food. But yeah, definitely, um, you know, I would love for y'all to, you know, come out to these events. Um, like I said, July, I think it's July, what, 
they, it's on a Saturday. I'm trying to remember. I believe it's July 15th is Biggie and Pac. And August is Nas and Jay-Z. Like, again, hip-hop heads. <laughs> They're going to fuck with it, 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 It's literally hip-hop heads. I get it, though. It may not be your forte, but come on. Hey, pun. But come on now. Like, it's so much fun. And on top of that, get some other poets other than me, because I don't mind spending a few bars in intermission. Gotta, come on now. Got to come together, people. And then September is like basically celebrating the 50 year anniversary of hip hop. Like, yeah. Y'all know, I don't know what y'all, y'all missing a lot, people. I'm just gonna, <laughs> do, I'm doing my best to help my guy out, but. We've been outside. I'm y'all like, like I'm outside. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I think that's, that's pretty much all I got, I think. So right. I had to put that out there. So. Yeah, absolutely. Like we said, always spreading the love. Mm -hmm. It's been a pleasure, man, as always. We done wrapped up another one. We're going to have a million episodes when it's all said and done. But we keep bringing on that heat, bro, and keep doing what you're doing out here. This is really needed. You know what I mean? And this is definitely, I feel like, you and your lane. Absolutely. appreciate it. So, man. Yes, always. I'm good right, to you. Thanks for tapping in. Thank, thanks for fucking with us, as always. And I'm going to be hitting you up very soon, bro. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. And like I said, we got to get a group of us to really show the fuck out. I'm just saying. I agree, man. That's that's the next step. Philly, Philly has been asking for more Ohio poets. They got one. Much like I said, shout out to my guy Mello from Cleveland. But huh, they need to stop sleeping on Ohio poets right now. And we're going to show them. We're gonna show them how great we are. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's on. I swear, bro, it's on. All right, All right yes, sir. We out. Thank you, yes, sir.